think we're live here, perhaps, even though for whatever reason. Is it uh, live or is it Memorex? I'm not entirely. There we go. It was saying we weren't live for a minute, but we're live. Okay. Hi, we're back, sort of ish. Live here, perhaps, even though. Oh, there I am. Ah. Damn it. Live in the chat. There we go. Yeah, now we're back. Okay. All right. Mm. Welcome back, my friends, to the shit that never ends. It does never end. It will never end. I know that's very upsetting to some people, but sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry, 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 sorry. So, Isn't that something you do with airplanes? Uh, that's a sortie. 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 That's, sorry. that's what you do with military jets, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, nice. So I had to ask, since it's almost Halloween, so next week will be the Halloween show. So do we? Yes, and the following week I will not be here. That's true. So we'll take a break. I'll be on siesta. Yeah, sleep. You sleep the whole week. Yes, nice. I'll be sleeping somewhere else. Nice. That's... But but the guard will be here. All right. Yeah, we have uh, the uh, live-ins during that week. There you go. Well, let, let give them my number. So well, we'll talk about that off the air. <laughs> In case the dog needs to be wrangled. Hopefully by December we'll have a Generac and you'll never get a call again. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I'm working on that. So, but I, uh, I was just thinking, do we do we wear costumes or something this week? Well, we could do something like that. I could just make my nose bigger. Do that. That's fine. I'll just I'll wear stuff. Find something. Like yeah. We we got we actually got invited to a birthday party and it was come as a, a villain so that the the kid who turned one could be the hero. Oh, nice. And I was like, that's cool. And I was like, wait, are we supposed to actually wear a costume or should I just wear like a Joker t shirt? Like, yeah, that's a cool. Like how specific is this? And then, so it turns out that some people came in like full on costumes. I was like, oh, yeah, shit, I, I guess think that's going to happen on Saturday. Oh, are you going to any of the shows this weekend? Not this week, no. No, no nothing. No, we're all off this week. So we're going to be hanging out and wow. doing stuff. Oh, so. that's right. You're on vacation. Yeah. Well, not yet. Not until the first. Oh, okay. But uh, everyone else is on vacation this weekend. And I home see. And we're going to be hanging around. We're going to be. I see you, P. We're going to be doing the uh, the stuff uh, we didn't have a chance to do yet because of okay. all the crazy schedule. That's shit. fine. I don't like you using foul language. Yeah, exactly. Well. Who am I? But, um. Mm. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be fun, though. But uh, OK, I know I don't I don't really wear costumes like even screwballs like they have that thing down there the day before Halloween or whatever. That's nothing new. The Saturday before Halloween. I I went down on costume once and a guy in a T-shirt. Oh, no, no, we're, we're playing at the whip hand. No, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm just kind of like any of those places. I just I don't want to wear a big ass costume. So 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 my events of the next two weeks, I'm playing at the whip pain with old school mm -hmm. on Friday night, Yep. Saturday night. I'm at Pagoda Motorcycle Club with Old School, which is open to the public, which is so strange. Um, and then the following week, I'm going to be with Instinct at Screwballs yeah. with a national act from Atlanta. That's I don't know how cool. national they are, but they're national enough for me. Yeah. And uh, and then that Saturday, I will be at uh, – no, that Friday, that Friday. That's Thursday night. That Friday night, the what is that, the 29th? Sure. I'll be at Nick's Roast Beef Cotman in Northeast Philly, which I know you can't go get to probably, and that means we can't go have our yeah, steak sandwich. Yeah, those sandwiches. Yeah. Damn it. So, uh, I'm sorry, dude. That's all right. That's all right. That's I'll a big deal that. for Jim and I. People yeah. don't know that we stop in. We go to a place called Stocksy Steaks. No, it's not no. Stocksy's. It's Steve's Printed King Steaks. Steaks. Uh, Stocksy's closed up many years ago. We like my dad calls Franz owns. Uh, what is it? Uh, Whatever John's? it was. Yeah. Is that what, like it's what it was, the turn of the century. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just century. like your dad. I'm going to be. Oh, look, we froze again on uh, our video. I have a feeling well, that like... uh, it we got <clears throat> shut down again. That's no, fine. now it's fine. Yeah. Maybe killing the bandwidth with all the crap we're doing, but. I don't know. I, I got to see what. The... Probably is okay for everyone else. Let's try this. I'll put this here. That should. Oh, now. Oh, hi, Patricia. Or hey. Patty, as she's better known. Uh, I got to turn the. Uh, there we yeah, go. I got to mute that tab. That sounds like warrant in the background. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely warrant. 
gotcha. Well, I'm not doing that, but oh, hey, you're live now. It says Jim Bax is on. Jim, Jim, Hello. so when, Jim Bax. I got to tell you a story about this guy. You do, Jim Bax. When I was in high school, you know, everybody was learning guitar, and there was this guy Jim Bax, and he was this gigantic monster of a guy with long hair, straight long hair, and he was the greatest guitar player in school like he was known he'd a rep like jim's the dude and somehow jim and i ended up in advisory together one year um so we were hanging out and we 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 hung out at my house and we're you know doing guitar stuff and you know i was just starting at that point i really wasn't much of a guitar player still not and so he started playing the beginning of the last in line Mm-hmm. I think it's the last line where that's it. And yes, we had Mr. Giamo together. That's right. We did. We did. We were in um what was that class called? Uh music theory. And I never heard, you know, a human being other than, you know, the band play it. And he played it and I was oh my God. This guy's a god. He's a god. He's a god on guitar. And uh, so that's that's my story of Jim Baxa. He was he was he was the guitar hero. And so I had heard about him through other people at school. And then I couldn't believe it when I ended up being in advisory with him and meeting him. It was like meeting a rock advisory star. advisory was. So in Philadelphia, we started school at 720, 720 or 722 in the morning. High school? Yes. Oh, that's horrible. And you would have a 20 to 30 minute class called advisory, which is where you came in. They would take roll, make okay. sure you were present. And it was supposed to give you time to get yourself prepped for the day. Oh, God, they just threw our ass into it. And then, you know, your first class was at uh, 10 of ten of seven, 10 of eight or mm-hmm. whatever it was. For me, my day in, ten, in 12th grade ended around noon because what I did was I took a... <clears throat> I took a uh, six-period lunch, mm-hmm. and then I did a class called community service, which yeah. it was basically if you were traveling to a job, it gave you time to get there. Well, my whatever you want to call it, internship community service was on Sundays at Channel 6, working for Gary Papa oh, nice. in the sports department. So, uh, so in 12th grade, I was in school. Monday through Friday for about four hours, you know, and I still cut. I could never figure out how to cut and get away with it. Uh, uh, Well, if you were me, you could forge my father's Uh, handwriting perfectly. And then if things went south, I'd call him up and be like, Dad, had a little problem. That Mm. never happened. But I guarantee you my father would have backed me on that. No, I came from a house where one time I threw up early in the morning in sixth grade. My I, my mom was like, what's the matter? Because I was moaning. And she's like yelling at me. And I said, I just threw up in the bathroom. She goes, we better clean it. You're going to be late for school. Great. So, Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. Jim, you son of a bitch. Get to school, you fucking waste of life. Yeah, he was. Ne- he never was. There. You know what? There was one time I almost died. Baxa, you should call in, dude. You I should get on Podbean, figure out how to call in. Yeah, I was super, super so cool. sick. And he actually was concerned. After and before, he would just come over and go, get better, you sick bastard. That was about as close as it Now, got. my grandfather lived with me all through high school and into my first couple of years of college. He moved into my house in 1979. He was 79. Think about that. That was cool. Anyway, this was a stone-cold, hardened man. Well, yeah. Lived a really, really intense life. Those old people have lived through world wars. They probably killed more people than you've thought about killing. He, he missed all oh, the service he? calls. Oh, shit. Because he was... 1915 was World War One, right? For America? Uh, 19, we went into it in 1918. 17, he was, 17, 17, 18. So he, was, he really? wasn't old enough yet. Somehow he missed it. <laughs> Somehow. He missed World War II because he was too old, and of course everything he was. So too God, he was in the middle. Yeah, okay, gotcha. But every time I got sick, that man would he would come up to my room because I lived in Read you the Princess Bride. He would just it was just funny to see him. He would just he would just come in and say a few words and make sure you were okay. You knew like that was a big goddamn deal. That pop up came up yeah, to see what was like? going on. Wow. 
Oh, great song. I don't know. Welcome aboard, Doc. Little Mootly crew. Yo. Hey, I liked your little summary. You you aped my my vibe on your uh, post. <laughs> I liked it. it I'm good. learning. I was busy as a as a bat in a, a fiddler's bug bitch. field today. It was, crazy. <laughs> it was it was it was a bad day for me, yeah. and I know it was a bad day for uh, for Jim. Tomorrow will be the last bad day for a while, I think, for a month. Well, Jim, Jim just told me he's got a list of podcast things that he would like to do and subjects. Jim, all you have to do is go on Podbean. Um, it's free. You can sign up and you can literally call in uh, and you could be on the show and have as much time as you need. Before you put me off. Yeah. Go, right? yeah, that's about how we do it. I think you should do it. I think it'd be funny. I think it'd be great. And I'd bow down before your altar. Like there you I, go. You know, like I did when I was in high school. Hey, Doc, you, you told me you had something. Yeah, I don't know how good it's going to sound over the thing, but yeah. It's this like a, uh, I, I bought this, the uh, Hearing Aid Stars single. And on the other side, it has a four and a half minute interview about the whole project. You want to play that? Sure. I, I turned it up. So you might want to turn your other stuff down. All right, give it a shot. Well, I won't do anything else. Your sound quality is excellent. By the way. Oh. Yeah, I don't have the uh, the box. I didn't hook the box up like I did last week. No, I mean I can hear you even putting your bag of weed away. Easy. Uh, shh, shh. Sorry. I'll say that too loud. I'll have everybody knocking on my door. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, it would help if I put the right speed on the on the thing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you want to mute that? Where do I have that? I okay. have, there it is. Well, that was pretty good. Yeah. All right, it sounds a little weird because it starts out with some music in the beginning. So those fuckers. You sound excellent tonight, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And here we go. Gail Murphy from Rock Network affiliate KLOS in Los Angeles reporting on the latest aid to famine relief. It happened overnight at the same studio where We Are the World was recorded, and everyone who was anyone in heavy metal music was there. It was, in fact, the who's who of heavy metal standing in that Hollywood studio, having a beer and talking about the road, and who just played there and where. They represented Judas Priest, Quiet Riot, Journey, Dio, Rough Cut, Ted Nugent, Motley Crue, King Cobra, Dawkins, Spinal Tap, and they were all there to either lay down a guitar solo or a vocal track for stars. The heavy metal band aid called Here and Aid, with all proceeds from the video documentary and the record going to famine relief. They were Journey's guitarist, Neil Schoen. How do you feel about doing this? <laughs> I, I think it's good. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's certainly not the, the first time that somebody's done this and the We Are the World has happened, but I think that uh, if people, if anybody puts us down for the reason that, that um, the purpose that we're doing it is to help people. You know, and whatever that means to anyone out there, I think that's a good cause. Here in Aid organizer, guitarist Vivian Campbell from Dio. What made you decide to do this? The KLOS Radiothon. That uh, obviously inspired us to do something, and what we did was talk about it, and all of a sudden people started taking this up on it, and now it's happened. So it's uh, obviously once you're committed to doing it, you got to make sure it's done right. Dio's Claude Schnell and Frankie Benelli and Kevin Dubrow of Quiet Riot. Isn't that interesting? You'll be all this will go to people who probably never have and probably never will listen to your music. Yeah, that's that's a real kind of ironic point, but at the same time, it's uh, 
sometimes the best the best sacrifices are the ones that are made anonymously. It's a lot of people are, are saying, oh no, here comes another one of those you know benefits for Ethiopia. But the thing is, no matter what anybody says, the point is to raise money to feed the hungry over there. Whether they're ever going to be aware of who the individuals that did it, that's really besides the point. You know, they're just hungry. Exactly. It's a, it's one of the rare opportunities again that we, that you get an opportunity to give something back. I mean, as well as being a, a great thing to be able to sing on something with all these people. But the main thing is, as Frankie said, was that you get to you know do something for somebody. It's, and you can only do it if you do it with everybody doing it together. Drummer David Alford from Rough Cut. You've got to do something to save these kids over there. I mean, in our business, you know, you come home late at night, you turn on the tube, and you see this kid that shrunk up to nothing, you know, and it just, it, it bombs me out heavily. It bombs everyone to hear out heavily. I would do anything to try to reverse that. Motley Crue's Vince Neil puts himself in the picture. Well, I still party and I still have a good time. I'm still I am Vince from Motley Crue, but I still am a human too and want to help, you know, whenever I can and whoever I can. Like the thing that happened to me, I don't want to see it happen to anybody else. And so if I could save a life in this way or the other things that I do, I mean, it's all worth it. Uh, me being who I am. Judas Priest lead singer Rob Halford. I think it's tremendous the, the fact that at least this particular style of music is being able to become involved and help with the cause. I think it's wonderful because it's probably about the, the heavy metal, heavy rock section of, of the music industry. It's about the only part of the industry that really hasn't made a contribution or an involvement in helping with the African thing. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted, you know, that Ronnie took the initiative to do it. Here in aid organizer, bass player, Jimmy Bain of Dio. The EA project is basically something that stemmed from the KLOS Rock Relief for Africa weekend when uh, Vivian and I became really aware that we could do more than just donate a guitar or donate a bass for the um, famine relief and we decided to take it a step further by calling up all our musician friends around the world and asking them if they'd be involved in doing a heavy metal record for um, basically the same cause. We've already videoed the backing track being recorded as such. We're, we're planning on videoing uh, in America all the sessions. We're videoing everything that we do as far as this project goes. Gail Murphy, Four and a Half Minute News, Los Angeles. Do you think that people will think that heavy metal will get windy as a result of doing something like that? I don't think so, no. The bottom line with me is I don't give a damn what people think about this as long as we raise a lot of money and save a lot of lives. Now, for everybody out there, it's too young to remember that. Yeah. Well, on May 20th and 21st in 1985, 40 artists from the hard rock music community gathered at AMN Record Studio to participate in the making of a record called Stars as part of a very special project known as Here and Aid. The Stars single coupled with the album, a video, documentary, and the making of the record and other ancillary products will raise money for famine relief efforts in Africa and around the world. 40. Did that then? Huh? What was the date that happened? Uh, May 20th and 21st in 1985. Wasn't that before Live Aid? Live Aid was what, June 13th? That was a whole, you know. I know, they, they came, they, they worked up to it, but. I, uh. I didn't even know there was a whole album, and I, I remember the video though. Yeah, the uh. Seventeen guitar solos. <laughs> I think we sat down here and watched it. We did watch yeah. it, yeah. Here, here's the tracks on the album. You got the Stars song, and then you got a live version of Up to the Limit from Accept, a live version of Hungry for Heaven from Dio, Jimi Hendrix Can You See Me, Kiss Live Heaven's on Fire. Motorhead Live, On the Road, Rush, Distant Early Warning Live, Good. The Scorpions, The Zoos Live, and Y&T Go for the Throat. Good. Man. Good shit was just good. 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 Good, good shit. That shite really, really did a good thing for people. Thank you, Doc. 
That's, that's another plug from that's Vinyl that's Closet Records here. In the... on it, and then they did some, you know, there's some some recordings that were right on. Yeah. Dedicated to it. Moments. Yeah. I see metalheads doing something. Metalheads are the greatest. They are. That's a funny thing. It's like, you know, you, you know, all the stereotypes you can pull out of your ass, but everybody I've ever met who was a metalhead was a decent human being. Most of them were. Most of them. They're not yeah. always, but I mean, they're at least like but what I can nice say is first. At, during the era of uh, metal, I went to lots of dance clubs and so I dated hot chicks that liked to go, liked to go oh dance. God, clubs. all they want to do is fucking dance. So, so, right. so I was in all these like you know sleaze ball environments, and there were always, always fights, all kinds of crazy bullshit going on. When I went to the Empire Rock Club in the yeah. Galaxy, people were there to see music. Now, hmm. mind you, there was a shooting at the at the Empire at one eh. point. Um, it was and, unrelated. Uh, the bass player from Heaven's Edge got shot uh, in a leg, I don't, but I don't know what that was all about. They said it was a lover's quarrel. Um, but when I went to dance clubs, there was constantly violence. It, there was violence at every single night. I'm talking about one night in 3,000, you know, when I talk about this. So, you know, that's that's the way certain news organizations, they, they will focus on the one in 3,000 versus the one every day. So anyway, uh, let that be a lesson. I think I think it's just it's an attitude thing. You go to a dance club and you you're not. I think if, if you're a metalhead, you're used to getting kind of crazy and doing all your crazy eh, shit. You don't like the music, so you're just there to check out the chicks. But but yeah, but I mean like a dance club, dance club. Like yeah, you're right. I've been I got dragged to those incessantly. It was a nightmare. There was mm -hmm. always somebody getting all bent at some like there was some place douchebag South, getting angry. South Street Flanagan's. Like, it was, oh, it was related yeah. to the Flanagan's uh, boathouse. And, uh, Expensive as fuck. Yeah, I, d I had to go there, and uh, a girl I was dating, and turned out that I ended up in the bathroom at the same time as some male stripper who had just been doing something somewhere in the club, and he noticed that I was with my girlfriend. He's like, she used to be my girlfriend. I'm like, that's nice, dude. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm standing there looking like, you know, Mark Louis the Louis the Fourteenth hair, you know. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, Christ. Funny how all that worked. He was. I think, I think there was more. There was more drugs and shit like that at the dance clubs than at the yeah. concerts too. I mean, everybody was taking the ecstasy and the coke and all that shit. But uh, there was no ecstasy back in the day when I was going to the dance clubs. It was metal metalhead could only coke. have weed and some coke. Yeah. It was coke and um. It was coke and and uh. And it was coke and it was, and coke, it was yeah. coke. Which um, you know, a little Pepsi think, thrown in there. Uh, anyway, um. But 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 it you know when we went to the the La Rock clubs it was pot and beer you know yeah and whiskey I, I just Jack liked Daniels. that all the all the all the people that went to all those clubs back in like especially the nineties and took ecstasy every minute of the time they were there and now they're worried that their kids might get a, a, a an MMR shot and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they might have autism like, yeah you go really, figure that whole you thing really out. think you yeah, gotta go figure okay. that okay yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you're right you're right okay. but meanwhile when they were in school they got 50 million shots and you know, yeah whatever. it wasn't until they got out of school and they started taking that that's the thing ecstasy is the i i find that drug so offensive not because of what it does to people i don't fucking care if you want to do stupid shit to yourself that's fine i find anything offensive that makes me love everyone yeah, I hate everybody. I do, yeah. I'm no, gonna, actually, I, I, I don't. I don't. I'm gonna start. I, I like off, a lot of people. I do, but I'm not. I don't want to walk uh, into a building and just love everyone. That's, there's so much stuff I watch that I just hate. Yeah, yeah you, you'd be like hell back in the hippie days, then. Oh, I hate the fact that I was in somebody's belly during the summer of love. <laughs> that pisses me off. Sorry, Joe. Things I had to endure. Ugh. Gross. So, oh, you're still drinking a beer. Never mind. I won't do that. Well, you're not going to interrupt it. You want to interrupt that sure. for the beer of the week? Yeah. Drum roll. We're not doing drum roll. <laughs> That's right. Let's do the alternate beer snobbery song. All right. All right. Very German. So there you go. So this is another, and we're doing all Halloween-based stuff. Oh, nice. 
Ooh, so, nice white cap. This is called The Fear. It's from Flying Dog Brewery. And the thing that I like best about Flying Dog is their um, artwork is all done by Ralph Stedman, who's a maniac, but I love him to death. Um, so and then The Fear is, uh, if you don't know, The Fear is from a Hunter S. Thompson, the Hunter S. Thompson novel, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's why I first encountered the phrase. I love Las Vegas. I have no fear in Vegas. <laughs> have you ever read that book? No. You should read that book. I probably should. You would like that book. I, Vegas is heaven to me. Not much of a head on this thing. I'm going to just go oh, straight wait, out of the box. There it is. There it is. I just want people to see what color it is. So I'm going to bring my look in. That's very dark. It smells toasty. Nice mm, and toasty. Yeah. Ooh, it's got a very alcoholic aftertaste. Yeah, I think it's like 6%. It does taste like pumpkin, though. It does have pumpkin in it, but it's not... It's not like... Did you have the Sam Adams pumpkin ale? I have it in the other room. That's a little too sweet. It's very sweet. It's almost like you're drinking a soda. You're drinking like a pumpkin pie soda, yeah. Yeah. The pumpkin ale I made had pumpkin in it, but it didn't have a ton of pumpkin spice. So it wasn't like you were drinking pumpkin spice coffee, but... This does have that, but it's bitter and it kind of like balances out really well. Yeah, it's, it's good. So it's uh, yeah, Flying Dog Brewery, The Fear, Imperial Pumpkin Ale. So, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I try. I've been doing two a week. I'm trying to cut back on that because we're running out of beer. But, um, let me know. We should just take a trip over there on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Just go In and fact, get a bunch we, of stuff. Speaking of Sunday. I wonder oh, if we can pregame. We sh probably should. But I don't want to pregame with beer because I'll be in the middle of the, the maze and then something bad will happen. I, I, I want to. Um, oh, man, there's a maze? I don't know. I don't know what. I don't. Honestly, I know nothing about what we're I doing. I don't think there's a maze. Okay. I think it's just you wander around and there are like just crazy ass people around. Hello, nickname. How we're, are you? We're not trying to be too cryptic, but we're going to a thing called Pinhurst. Uh, yeah. Saturday, which is a uh, it's a horror uh exhibition if you will haunted house thing it's an old it, it was a it was a, men, a state mental asylum back in this i don't know 50s 60s and in the 70s one of the local news guy what, what station was that from six ten ten i think i don't know um oh my god who was that bill baldini oh my god bill baldini did Channel an expose on penhurst asylum that he, he basically showed that people were just kind of like left in the hallways naked to, you know, die. Um, Whatever it takes, man. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's wrong. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it was it was back in the day when things like the words like autism weren't really they weren't defined. I found the uh, video. You want nice. To, you want to hear it? We could do that. It's 50 minutes long. 15? 50. Oh, no, we don't want to hear that. That that, you know, that's terrible. Yeah. It's called Suffer the Children if you want to look it up. No, I don't want to. I don't want to say that. But um, Durr. Pennhurst got in a lot of trouble for that because basically they were getting all the state, and this is the sick thing, because they were getting state money and not using it correctly. Yeah. Now, if you believe the idiots and morons, and I know a lot of idiots and morons, believe it or not. Um, I know I'm one of them. So. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. They, uh, it, they, they I, I've heard people like say that they used to do experiments on it. No, they just neglected them. Just as bad. Well, not as bad, but bad. So this guy, Bill Baldini, did this expose, and they closed the place down. I used to live uh, about a 10-minute walk from the place. So it would be, you know, it was very close That's to my house. 1968, dude. Okay. Wow. 68. Um, no wonder so I don't remember it. I was one. They, yeah. I, I, I remember the name. I don't remember the story, but I did read. I read. I listened to those. Anyway, so Penhurst was shut down. Fine. So... For years, um, people would go there. Kids would go there, urban explorers, if you will, and go in and, and just walk around the place because it's creepy and abandoned. In fact, there was a gang. Their initiation was they there were holes in the floor. Like the place was completely shit. So they would lower you. They'd tie you up, lower you down on a rope through the floor and suspend you above one of the levels. Mm -hmm. And you had to stay there all night. Nice. And I'm thinking like that. I, all right, that's ghosts, worth it. Ghosts sure. and shit aside, I'd be worried some bum would come in and light me on fire. But right. that's just me. I'm paranoid. Yeah. Um, so Penhurst, it, it is really creepy. We tried to go there one time. 
um, they sold bits of it to the Veterans Administration. So there are military police roaming the place. And uh, the East Vincent My Police dad was. East Vincent Police Department uh, patrols it a lot. So we got shoot away. Yeah. We had a we had a place in Northeast Philly that was similar to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. We had one. There was always there are always places. It's called Byberry. Oh yeah. 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 So so a couple of years ago, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago, they decided to do a haunted attraction there, which people got very angry because they're like people got experimented on. Whatever. But uh, they didn't. But um, I've been there once, and it was very very cool. Um, the buildings are very very old, and they. Like, I, I actually got kind of distracted by just looking around at how cool everything was. Like, it's just, it just really neat uh, to be in there. Well, my wife had went there a few years back, and she, she wanted me to go just for that factor. She wanted me to see the, uh, all the displays and everything. Yeah, it's really a cool place. Um, now, they did have uh, – there are tunnels under the, built, under the ground. that Obviously, that's where you put tunnels. But um, they're between the buildings. Sounds like my kind of place, Jim. Oh, it totally is. And uh, the tunnels, they will have, you know, they do it up like Halloween stuff. So they have like toxic waste and barrels and stuff. But it's, it, you, you're going to do Drink it. Drink it. Smell it. Sniff it. You'll feel better. <laughs> yeah. It's totally what you do to your, your basement or your, your garage. Uh. It's, it's, it's smoke and lasers and just people creeping around the place. But every so many feet, there's a door, and you can just bail out. Right. So it's very cool. Now, I don't know. Bree, I think, is going to shit her pants, and maybe I'll have to carry her out yes. when she passes out. But uh, we'll see. Yes. But Which is ironic, because she's the one that took me to the damn place where the fire engine went off in my face. Okay. I was not happy about that. Hmm. Fairly sure it scared the soul right out of my body. Right. That's correct. Yeah, you were scared by a fire engine. Are you listening to our show now? I, I have it on somehow, and oh, okay. I, I don't know what I'm doing. So we have three listeners because Doc's on, you're on, and nickname is on. There's not a lot of um, activity tonight. I don't know what. Uh... Well, it's kind of almost a full moon. No, it's a full moon. I thought that was yesterday. By my definition, I looked out the window. It's very bright. I can't oh, see. It's I thought it was yesterday, but I don't yeah, know. what do I know? It's probably a secondary, yeah, I know. secondary moon. Oh, Mary, it's a Mary. Today we're in Pittsburgh. Easy fellow. Pittsburgh. Fuck Pittsburgh. What are you talking no, about? No, I got to go there. Why? I want to go. Pittsburgh? Yeah. Tell you want to go to Pittsburgh. I want to see it. It's a slag heap. I want to see yeah, it. Yeah, but that's that's where Night of the Living Dead was made. See? Mm-hmm. I want to see it. And then nothing has gotten any better since. <sighs> oh, my God. It's a lot of fenders back there. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm really a Gibson guy. It's so funny. And behind us is just nothing but fenders. Well, but Gibsons are all in there. Yeah, they're on the wrong wall. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you I got do? a guitar over at my buddy's house. I got to call him and find out what's going on with that. He's had it for like four months. Why is that? Is he fixing it? He was thinking about buying it. And well, why would he I have to? He has he's it. renting it for free. There you go. Um, and my kid has one of my Gibsons. So I have a Les Paul Classic, which is a 60 reissue standard at my son, at uh, my buddy's place. And then I've got a... Uh, a Gibson S1 at my uh, my son's place. She got stuff scattered everywhere. Yeah. Like a hoarder. Oh, it's weird. Hmm. Well, my God, this stuff is kind of good after all. I'm, I'm a little uh, loopy at mm. this point, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, that's probably best. So, well, you know, it's time for. It, it feels like it's time for the news. Yeah, we should probably do that. Okay. All right. Well, you are you queuing something up, or I'm should I just it up, man? Should I just you know play my own shit here? Find the perfect song for your video in five seconds. Go to this is just music to make you feel like you're rushed. I feel rushed. You ready? Sure. Wow. Oh no! Wow, that's a weird echo. Jesus Christ. Is that better? That's, That's better. better yeah. The news with Jim! What's your last name? Yeah, uh, I don't remember. Okay, that's why it's the P word. What the fuck? No, it is not. Jesus. 
Well, we'll start with this because you and I you love it. really don't. You and I are talking about this. Uh, Franz Stuber, 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 or Cyber, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, Paul Stanley is longtime guitar tech pastor. And, you know, uh, my buddy Rich apparently knew him. Really? Yeah, he said he was a great guy. And I think, I, you know, my memory's a little foggy. Yeah, we've been there drinking. Stuff, but I think I met this guy. Yeah. And had a chit chat with him. He hmm. also worked for other bands as well. When Kiss wasn't on tour, he toured with other bands and helped out. And if it's the guy I'm thinking of, he was just an aces great guy. Man, I'm not talking about freely. That figures. Well, he passed away from COVID, even though, as we all know, it's not real. He was vaccinated too. So he it must happens. have had an, uh, an autoimmune underlying. issue. Yeah. Or an underlying issue of some sort. Yeah. If you, if you know, if your immune system Because apparently, I found out recently that I was exposed mm -hmm. to a number of people. I've been vaccinated and have had COVID. So I guess you could say that, like you, I'm we're uber, uber we're, protected. We're, uh, I had no, no issue uh, upon finding out about this about four weeks after the nope. fact. Uh, so, but but that's interesting. Yeah. No. But a yeah. number of people got really messed up. The, the problem with the virus is it's not like the flu. Well, it is like the flu, but it's like one of those things where, you know, now they're kind of figuring out how to fight it a little bit more. Back in the day, they had no clue because it was so brand new. No clue for the flu? Yeah, and it's brand new. And so, like, it's the new clue reveal. The problem with this is because it's like SARS, it's a respiratory thing. Yeah. That I mean, he could have been having an allergy day. Yeah. If, if you're just, it's, right? it's when your lungs are involved, you're fucked. If you have anything going on and your lungs are involved, you're fucked. That's just the way well, it is. I will tell you that that's during, science. You're fucked. During COVID, uh, there were a couple of days where I was having a hard time breathing. Mm hmm. So. I woke up one morning, turned over, felt a little weird, turned back. I was fine. I didn't. I didn't get any symptoms. Almost. I mean, very it's so mild. Good I, for you. I didn't know. Um, My ears are ringing like a motherfucker. But I usually don't get human sicknesses Still. anyway, so it's no worries. But uh, yeah, so there is that. I wanted to lead with that since that seems like that's a yeah. That was that was sad. Sad. Apparently Good guy. Sad. Yeah. Good guy. So. We had some celebrities in town last week. Did you know that? We had one in town today. We did? Filming. Who? Uh, Nick Nolte's in town. Nick Nolte? Doing a movie. Oh, wow. Well, that's weird. But these guys, these guys, those guys, use guys, whatever the hell I'm saying, these are the blood-stained men. Oh, for Christ. They were Jimmy, in town. Jimmy. Are you not excited? They were on Tosh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> These are guys who are. Look, I get it, but I, I got it. And I got I it. Don't really. These guys are against circumcision. They wear white, everything, and bloodstained crotches. And they were in our town, and I'm so excited that they were here. I hope they went to the mall and had a good time. I'm Maybe. hoping they didn't go with their bloodstained balls like that. But, mm. um, yeah, hey, you know what? It, Probably yeah. should stop. Yeah, you know, I've my my nephew isn't circumcised, and when I saw him, I was like, "God damn, that kid's hung." And then I realized, oh, he's really not. He's just got a huge okay. But um, I don't know. I I I've been I was circumcised. We were born during the time when everyone was for cleanliness issues. Um, I've I've you know whatever it it is what it is, and I don't have a boy, so I don't have to worry about it. But I did and crossed that bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't even but ask. But I'm Jewish, so well, you got something we do. Sons Abraham, yeah. But uh, got to do the right thing. It's, it's still, you know, that is kind of a weird thing for God to request, don't you think? What? What do you think? I'm just. Oh man, that went through my nose. I think Sorry. I... Hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, so the bloodstained men were here, and they protested. I don't know why, but one of the main intersections in our town now, everyone protests everything like it's the fucking 90s it's again. it's a bad intersection and it jams up it the It jams traffic. up traffic and it annoys the yeah. shit out of me. I don't give a what shit. What better way okay? to uh, create havoc? Yeah, it's like, look, it, fuck you. It's the parent's choice for right now. I get you want to protest. Don't block my street, whatever. I, I'm just, the thing I'm, I'm pissed about was I, I've heard people say that they're happy that people, that their kids are protesting. Well, do you agree with what they're protesting? I'm just glad they're protesting. I'm just glad that they're involved in some way in something to do something with their life. I mean, all they do is play the video game. It's the video game. 
and the, uh, the tick the tick talker the tick talk i'm tired of it it's, I, I don't understand oh, what's happening look, asshole yeah exactly i don't know you know have a have a cause be there for a fucking reason please okay so enough of those idiots so are you a fan of winnie the pooh yay fat man and blobber boy oh sorry are you a fan of winnie the pooh I, I watched Winnie the Pooh. Oh, you didn't child. read Winnie the Pooh. I, I may have read something. I, I wasn't reading a three. Oh, okay. I um I so, was one of the non gifted children. Gotcha. So the bridge that uh a there's a there's a bridge in the Winnie the Pooh. Watch series. out for that damn bridge. Yeah, they there's a bridge where they is in the hundred acre wood and there are pictures, you know, illustrations of it in the old Winnie the Pooh books. Um the actual bridge it's based on is being auctioned off. Why not? So uh, if you want to buy it, it's looking like it's going to cost about 250,000 pounds, which is like... Just make your own. I don't know, around half a million bucks. Well, you know where London Bridge is? Hmm. Where is it? Pounds are higher than dollars. Where's London Bridge? It's in like somewhere in the middle of America. It's in, yeah, it's in yeah. Um, Arizona. Yeah, there you yeah. go. It didn't fall down yet? People. Huh? Huh? It Arizona. didn't fall down London yet. London Bridge is in Arizona. The, the the original. The original. And the thing that you're, if you've ever seen pictures and you think there's London Bridge, that's Tower Bridge, not London. London Bridge is extraordinarily boring. It's just stone. It's shit. So, I'm gonna don't you disparage all bridge. It's shit. Fuck you, you fucking cunt. There you go. That's not a bad word over there. So I'm gonna mention this and then I'm gonna just back away from it. So Ben Simmons, that piece of shit, was suspended for only one game because he wouldn't practice and is kind of a douchebag. There's a lot more to that story. But I, yes, I don't agree with care. Yeah. You just yeah. fucking do it. Just do your job. You're getting paid more this year than I'll ever see in my life. You have been getting paid more than I will ever see in my life since you were probably 15. I don't want to hear about your bullshit. Just take your money and play the fucking game you supposedly love you piece of shit see that's that's where they fuck up at they suspend them they shouldn't suspend them they should fine them make them pay the they money back flay them alive piece of shit it's it's kind of like like um what's his face eric lindros back in the day he he was the number one draft pick and where's the number one draft pick go the shittiest team in the league so he went i think to the what was it the fucking nordiques i think and he wouldn't play for them he refused to play for them and he tied everything up into arbitration, and finally the Flyers got a hold of him. So he was good for a little while. Then he started being douchebag there. So they benched him for like a year. It, it, it just, you're playing a game and getting paid for it. I fucking hate you. Just do your job. All right. I said, I'm, nah, I don't want to hear that shit anymore. Piece of shit. So how hot is the, the housing market? Do you know? Well, I mean, here it's pretty hot. All the houses are burning down. But uh, home in Massachusetts, which was seriously damaged by fire, has been listed on the market for three hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars. Why not? And I mean, I Free can't charcoal for those who apply that's now. That's a picture of it. Oh my God! I mean, well, that house when it was nice wasn't worth that much. Real estate. It's shitty looking. Land. I mean, it's burnt shitty looking stuff. So yeah, if you want to move to Massachusetts, um, the only advice I can give you is uh, don't. So this is kind of sad. Um, New Zealand has parted ways with its uh, wizard. Hmm. So the New Zealand Council has ended their contract with their, I don't know, wizard, Ian Brackenberry Chanel. Do tell. Was contracted by the city of Christchurch in New Zealand for, uh, what was it, 16000 a year to be their town wizard. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, for acts of wizardry and other wizard-like service. What the hell is a wizard-like service? Roseanne? fuck is that the wizard the wizard what are you uh, fucking stupid i'm paying attention to anything gotcha 
And if you ever want to freak a cat out, yeah, I do. Just play that through a stereo. Mm. Your cat will turn its head or oh, freak my, out. And in other news, my mouse repeller stopped working, so my cat's caught a mouse. Uh oh. And he spent like four hours killing it the and other that's morning. That's how we knew the neighborhood was going to shit. Yeah, Jim totally had joking. mice, and the rest of us had to suffer through it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, like this place is like some pestilence. We well, do you have a crawl space? You guys don't have a crawl space. No crawl space. No, I've had I've had mice here. We we have actually. When we, I first moved in, there was one in my garage. I had I before I had siding. Yeah. He was living in a little hole, That's and I, I I always had a solution for that. Fill the hole. Fill the hole with caulk. Expandable foam. But they eat through that shit. No, that he. Well, not when they're in there. No, he died. Yeah, but um, we have a crawl space and then I felt behind bad. our washer and dryer. It's like a it's dirt. I think, no, no, it's not that. No, somebody else. But the, the houses like the one we have. Yeah, there's the, no basement. There's no basement. Well, no, they do have basements, but behind the washer and dryer. Uh, well, I guess if you don't have a basement, I don't know. doesn't have a basement. We sit on a slab. Behind that, it's dirt. Yeah. And it's dirt under the kitchen and all the way to the it's den. so weird. Yeah, I don't like it. But I don't see it because there's a washer and dryer in front of it. Because we're not fucking savages. Yeah. I'm in your dirt area. Huh? This is the dirt area of your oh, house. Oh, right, right. Yes, I have dirt in my house. It would be like right about here. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right, so let's go to music news. We're only like three and a half feet below ground level. This one makes me laugh. So fucking Vince Neil fell off a stage in Tennessee. I watched the video. That was a shame. Broke his, what, he broke ribs, right? Oh, did he? Yeah, he broke a couple of ribs. Uh, Not a good thing to do over 60. No, shit like that doesn't heal easily. Um, and I got the wrong news story up here. That's the video. Uh, there was a small gap. He fell. He gives a shit. I watched it. What did he do to himself? I thought he broke his fucking ribs, and I don't see. Yeah, he broke his ribs. Can't breathe, and bastard. We'll deal with it medic. We'll deal with it medically. No shit, really. That's really insightful. And there's a picture of Vince with an M3 uh, placard. I don't know what year of M3 that was. If if it was back in the day, four years ago, he would have got stuck in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he's lost he's still... a significant amount of weight. Oh, that's good for him. Here, here's the uh, here's the video. Is this the video? Yeah. After the commercials. Ah, oh, fucking YouTube. Sweet. Yeah, that's him. That's his silhouette. Yeah. Oh! That's probably okay. Dana Strum speaking. One thing is a tribute, and every one of you fuckers sing so he hears it when he gets taken out. You ready? Here we go. Ooh. That guitar player is smoking, dude. Yeah, He's so good. So that that uh, was live. He, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing he fell and like. There was a. I saw the, another video where there's a small gap from the stage. To the speaker monitors or like, the yeah. subs, and it wasn't marked great. And he was walking out to step onto the subs, and right down he went. Jesus, yeah. And I'm guessing he probably just hit the stage on the way down and cracked oh, the river he, three. His guitar went up. Yeah, I think he hit his head. Jesus. It was a whole thing, man. It was. Uh, it wasn't cool. Uh, you know, um, Steven Tyler a couple of years ago did a very similar thing. He walked off a stage. Mm-hmm. He didn't, you know. Hey, I've done it. You have multiple times, but specifically, I did it at the water tower. Oh. They don't have a square stage; they have a a stage that's shaped like an inverted T or or a reverse T. So I was walking uh, on the T section. I backed up. I was backing away in the T section toward uh, the edge. Oh. Didn't realize that off I'd gotten edge. to the edge, and I edge, and I'd fallen right off. Oof. 
Yeah, but so, you keep playing. I've you know I've heard I you always passed play. out and still played. So. I play, I play, I play. I'm having heart problems. I'm out of rhythm. I'm playing. I'm eh, laying on just... a floor somewhere. I'm passed out. You know, I go to the emergency room the day after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like last Halloween. I fell. A ladder sank into the mud, and I fell onto a tree root. And I hit it with my hip, and I hit it with my shoulder. And I thought for a minute I broke my shoulder. And my first thought was, fuck that. It's Halloween. I can't. I'm not going. Yeah, yeah. I'll work it into the whole thing. We were cutting a trim, tree limb out front, and we didn't have it tied properly. And it whipped around and hit me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like my wife says, I don't know how I'm still alive. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, see, there's another shot from it. He walks out right there and goes boom. Boom. Yeah. So this is kind of a a, a happy and not so happy. So John Crabby wasn't there. Paul McCartney is going to induct the Foo Fighters into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, apparently Paul McCartney and uh, Dave Grohl are very, very good friends. And I, I'm, I'm good with that. I like the Foo Fighters, but I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around so many other bands from way back in the day that still aren't in there. I get it. No, I think what it is is that Dave Grohl has such uh, an impact in the music business, and he's so well-respected that they're just throwing him a bone. Mm. He's a great guy. Uh, his music's good. Uh, he's, good. He's a good musician. It's good music. It's good music. Is he worthy over a band like Queensryche? No. I rest my case. Like, he, he should be there, but they should be there first. Yeah. That's, you know, I don't understand how this works. It's like, and I it's think. It's just like anything else in life, Jim. It's it's political. I think a lot of it is is they pass you by, you haven't gotten in, they've moved on. But I still think they should they should pull these bands from back in the day and they get into just, come on, just. Let's be. It's I mean, quantity, not quality. Yeah, I'm not saying you bring the guy in who like you know came out with the monster mash, but it's quantity, <sighs> not quality. Fuck them, bastards. What else have I got? Oh my god, is that all I've got? Oh, and uh, I'll mention this: Colin Powell died. Yes, a couple of days ago, which really sucks because he was really. Uh, I was, I, you know, when I was a younger, guy. I was hoping he would run for president. I would love to see him as president. He, well, you he will was, not now. Well, but he he did have some issues that. Would have kept him out. I think he even had like a little bit of Alzheimer's and stuff. But um, he was a great guy, great man, and uh, shit, that sucks. Yeah, I, I don't shame. like that. So, all right, and since I can't leave us with that, I'm going to do this one too. So, a bunch of zebras escaped from Illinois' pumpkin farm. Yeah, all your life you've been waiting to hear that. I got nothing that sentence. To come back with that. Two zebras escaped from a suburban Chicago. Pumpkin farm. What were they doing at the pumpkin farm? I, I don't remember. I read this. I know I did. Um, they were in an indoor zoo at a pumpkin farm. Gold, goat birds, pumpkin patch, and Why apple orchard in Pine Tree Road. Mm-hmm. Um, and they escaped. Um, passenger car filmed the animals running into a field, posted a video on TikTok. They look like zebras. They got stripes. Well, uh, remember the yes. striped gum? Oh, that was great for five seconds. It was the best gum in the world for the first five seconds of chewing it. It was the best tasting anything. And then it was just gum base. Yeah. So uh, after about two hours, they did track them down and get them back. So the zebra's okay. But it just, you know, Mm -hmm. zebras. Fucking zebras. All right. Yes, Black Sabbath should. Yes, definitely. All right, that's that's all I care about. Ooh, it's Halloween soon. Play that in my car like almost every time I drive it, which isn't a lot lately. I gotta go in the office tomorrow, dude. Ugh. Damn it! I don't think I ever will. I have to spend the entire effing day there. Yeah. But it'll be shorter than the days I spend in the other room. True. Yeah, true. All right. So I have to wander off for a moment. Do you have any chicken man? I I can I can probably wrestle up some. Let's see. And then I and then I wanna I wanna talk to our listeners because so don't any of the listeners in the Podbean live 
studio go anywhere and uh, I'll uh, I'll look up some chicken man in the meantime. You know, whip up a, well, I'll sit here and babble to you whip up a chicken man. Let's see if I can. So mad that thing I so many that we got didn't done. work out. Oh, here's one. That's too short. We've done that one. All right, let's so well. All right, so we're going to do a chicken man episode now. There you go. Was on his way by bus to Midland City Hall when he was suddenly and angrily attacked by his fellow passengers. At the request of the passengers, the bus driver stopped the bus on the Great Midland City Bridge. And then the fantastic feathered fighter, with the passengers in pursuit, climbed to the top of the steel span, where... Winged warrior, can you hear me? Yes, Commissioner. It's your mother. We've brought her to see you. My mother. It's all right, Commissioner. I'll talk to my boy. Benton Harbor, get down here. Oh, Mother. Who do you think you are? I am the fantastic feathered fighter, the white Oh, stow it. Warrior, Midland City's crushing answer. What are you doing up there? I'm waiting for the crowd below to disperse, Why Mother. Why are all those people shouting for you to jump? Because that's what they want me to do. What for? What did you do? They want to see me fly, Mother. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, certainly it is. That's why well, I'm Well, why don't you fly for the people? Mother. Mother nothing. Fly. Mother, my flying is a sacred and great gift. I cannot sit oh, for you. Oh, shut up and fly. Fit and harbor, you fly right now, or I'll come up there and give you a smack you'll never forget. But I simply... Flap your wings. I'm flapping. Now jump. I'm jumping, I'm jumping. And take like a chicken. Bark, bark. Bark, bark. Whoa! How can Midland City's crushing answer to lawlessness and or evil refuse to obey his mother? At this moment, as millions of children observe this drama, will the feathered fighter fly? What do you think? Wow. Oddly enough, Hmm. Benton Harbor has been in the news. I, I was going to say, I saw that the other night. And I started giggling like an idiot. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Oh, damn it. What? Someone other than us was actually in the studio, and I said, hey, stay there. I want to talk to you before you go when I get back, and she left. Well, she must have seen you on camera. <sighs> yeah, that does it every time. Damn it. Sorry. Can't help it. He scares people with that package. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> so, anyhow. But you said uh, Fenton Harbor was in the news. I missed that. What happened? Well, it's a, I, I it's a real look, place. I got to look it up. Oh, is it? It's been in the news like crazy lately. Hold on. B E N T O N Harbor. Haba. 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 Michigan. Yeah, I can't remember what the hell it was about. I think it's about their water. I think you're it right. Is. Yeah, the and water is a, shitty. There, it's a lead in the uh, water. Very uh, black area and uh they've been neglected by the state of michigan uh so they had a a big news story and now the, all of a sudden the state's like oh well we're gonna take care of that we're gonna we're gonna fix that right up don't you worry uh our good citizens we're gonna fix that right up yeah so it's one of those dealios damn it it cracked me up benton harbor and i'm like oh my god that's not, i wonder if that's one of the places that um one of the places where the water used to like catch on fire coming out of the tank. No, it's it's one of those. I know it's got a lot of lead in it's it. It's the lead thing. Yeah. So the uh, I heard yeah, that's the one where their mayor was like they're going to um they're going to replace all the pipes in town. Yes, in, in like a record amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. I think we're still like So here's the origin of Chicken Man, which relates to that. Oh, okay. Let's fight like demons. No. Benton Harper, employed as a shoe salesman for a large downtown department store, spends his weekends, his only two days off, striking terror into the hearts of criminals everywhere as the white-winged warrior called Chicken Man. How did it come about that Benton Harbor weekend-winged warrior selected the visage of the chicken in his crusade against the forces of evil? Now it can be told. Yes, may I help you? How do you do? I'm looking for a costume. Oh, what did you have in mind? Something that will strike terror into the hearts of criminals everywhere. I see. Well, how about this? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Why not try it on? Very well. Here, I'll help you. Thank you. 
There you are. Now, take a look in the mirror. Hmm, not bad. I wonder if you would permit me to conduct a quick experiment outside this store. Certainly. Love the door, Sam. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. Yeah? Are you by chance a vicious criminal? Uh-huh. Fine. Would you take a look at this costume I'm wearing? Yeah. Do you feel anything strange? Uh... Anything at all? Uh, yeah. And what is that? I'd, uh, like to kiss you. Kiss me? Ugh. Yeah. How do you account for that? Because you look like an adorable bunny rabbit. You know what daddy likes. Well, how does it go? What else do you have? A teddy bear and a chicken. A teddy bear? And it'd be cute. Wrap up the chicken, please. <laughs> That's a terrifying picture, by the way. It is. They were, I saw it this week. Somebody asked me about it because they, they tuned in the show and they wanted to know about it. Oh, God help them. And uh, I sent them the whole history of Chicken Man. Chicken <laughs> Man started in the 60s. Yeah, it's old. I, it's old. Yeah. Chicken Man. So so uh, Saturday night after uh, I played a gig uh, recently and with Old School. And, uh, was I there? I was there. I was yeah, there. you were there. Nice. I was hanging out with a guy named Pat Schumacher. Or shoemaker, however, whatever he pronounces that as, but he was the bass player for a band called Sick Vicky, and they were uh, they were the band that had some mild success. So they had uh, Bill O'Coin as their manager, and if you know who Kiss is, you know who Bill O'Coin is, and if you know who Billy Idol is, you also know who Bill O'Coin is. I've heard these people. So anyway, we came we came back here to the Adler Bar and had some beers, and uh, he played me his uh, his new album that he's he's working on with a guy named Danny Danzi. It's actually done. He's going to be touring support for Danny Danzi. And uh, it was pretty cool. And I just want to throw out some props uh, to Pat Schumacher. What a good guy. Uh, um, we were hanging at the bar till 4.30. Wow. The wife wasn't happy. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little late. I don't think I've made up the sleep from that since. Uh, but uh, drank a lot of beer. A mm. lot of beer. Yeah. But I was I was trying to find one of their tunes. Pardon my uh, my uh, beer noises. I know I'm good enough. How about you? So let's see if I can find something. So this is the bass player that I was hanging out with the bass player for this uh this not well that's, well, that's uh, bass but uh, bass, yeah. uh, for this song. Danny Danzi, the new album is called Tribulations, and Pat Schumacher, Schumacher, Schumacher is yep. the bass player. Be touring with him all over Europe, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. That minor mm -hmm. that comes. Oh, they went up there. There is a minor. Pretty good. Lights, yeah. What do you hear this guy play guitar? I mean, solo wise. Mm -hmm. Kind of exciting, you know, to be hanging out with a guy that's, you know, he's about to embark on. I mean, I know lots of people who've done that, but yeah, still, still, it was still nice. Nice guy, had a lot of fun. Drank a lot of beer. <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of stuff we were writing back in the 80s and early 90s. Oh, yeah.
reminds me of um, a more complicated version of Damn Yankees. Because the vocals are similar to Damn Yankees. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, yeah. I think he's actually playing all this. Like all this, all this? Yeah. Shit. Kind of like Mammoth. Eddie Van Halen's son did all the, all the instrumentation of his album by himself. God, this is still going on in the world anyway. That's how I felt. Love it. I really like this. This is different. Cupid's Undie Run. I also wanted to bring up that I, I uh, this past weekend, that was that that song was just kick ass, dude. Uh, I was down at a Yards Brewing on Sunday night for my son's birthday party. That's right. You gotta wish and him I happy had a uh, French toast beer. Oh, wow, wow, really? wow, 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 wow. And I don't do that. You liked it? I'll do that. Hmm. I'll do that. Yeah. It was good. Nice. They didn't have it on sale. Because I, I would have bought a case of it in an instant. It was so freaking good. <sighs> wow. How can they do that? They got to, well, I guess they have limited supply. <laughs> okay. But thanks, Pat Schumacher. Shoemaker. I, 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 if I could spell his name right, it would be great. Yeah, what the hell, man? I've typed it four times already. I don't know. Uh, but uh, wow, what a great record! I've I've been listening to it, and I'm digging it. And uh, take me on tour. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they 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 apparently might be touring with um with T's. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Really, man. So, good things happening for them. I'll be at the office and playing with old school on the weekends and occasionally instinct. Thank you. Well, you got a busy weekend coming up. I do. I have a, I have a very busy weekend, musically and socially. Then we have shit. That's right. Yeah. We're going to have to bring some booze, dude. Well, duh. Yeah. Yeah. Free game. And we'll talk to the social director find out what time we're leaving. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting to see how many. Uh... What the hell? What? Trying to post something on our website. And oh, it, it just it just never works. What are you doing on over there, Munchy Man? Oh, that's my baggy. Gotcha. My oh, uh, God, I hate Facebook anymore. You guys want to hear something a little different? Yes. All right. See if see if you can tell me who this is. This is a cool tune too, by the way. All right, here I come. I like it. Sing it. Oh, what goes up? 
must come down. Yeah, spinning wheel, it's got to go round. I'm talking about your trouble, it's a crying sin. Ride a painted pony, let you spin and the wheel spin. Yeah. You got no These two money. guys you would never think of you got no singing home. together. Oh, no. Spinning wheel, all alone. Talking about your trouble, then you never learn. Ride a painted pony, let the spin and wheel turn. Did you find One of them's uh, Engelbert Humperdinck. The other, the other guy is, uh, the other gentleman is Gene Simmons. Really? What? That's yeah. fucking weird. Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons and Engelbert Humperdinck? That's yep. bizarre. I bought, I was at Walmart one time, and they had these uh, CDs, the many faces of, one's got, I got Pink Floyd, Motley Crue, Metallica, Iron Maiden, and the many faces of Kiss. And it's got a whole bunch of different songs that the guys did with other people. And then one disc has all like a cover tunes of Kiss songs by other bands. Every, all of them are pretty cool. Every, every CD is pretty cool. You find shit that you never knew was out there. You know? huh. Fucking Engelbert Humperdinck and Gene Simmons. Piercy and J.P. Lee doing the I'm telling you, if you ever at the dentist and they give you nitrous, you have to listen to this song. <laughs> You'll see puppet uh, claymation. Oh my God! No, that, that's everybody wants some. <laughs> Holy shit! I had no idea they they came. It was the first time I ever uh, had nitrous, and they came over and they what do you want to listen to? They showed me the list, and the only thing on there that was worth a shit was Van Halen too. So I'm like, Yeah, I'm in. And it opens with this. And it starts with that intro, and I'm like, yeah. I assume that's what it's like to be on acid. Probably. I don't want to find out. That's one thing I never want to do. I'm curious to hear how he handles his solo on this. Let's see. Competent. Jakey Lee style, right? Yeah. All right, so you want to hear some, some cool J- Jakey Lee? Listen to this song. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Obviously, this is post Ozzy. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy's sickeningly cool. This is obviously a cover tune. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes! Now that's more like. He does Seek and Destroy by Metallica. Really? Wanna hear that? Yes. Yes. Interesting. Jakey Lee doing Metallica's Seek and Destroy. You know 
what daddy likes. If you didn't guess, mm. all the strats in white with black pick guards. Yeah. Uh, I might I might like Jakey Lee a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. We may have to pick one of those in a minute. Uh, I'm not competent now. No? No. Encompass Mentis? Yeah, I'm com Encompass Drunkus. Ah, there we go. He's, uh, he's all fucked up. It's what he's trying, he's trying to always drink so speak. Much. People ask us all the time, why do you guys drink so much? And our answer is always, because we can afford to. <laughs> and that's not saying much. <laughs> this is like Rob Zombie on vocals. Yeah, a little bit. I'm thinking it is. Yeah, that's Rob Zombie. Yeah. So he also does um, It's a Long Way to the Top with Z Lemmy and Flight from the Inside with Jack Blades, who's the vocalist for Night Ranger. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's what that's all about. It's <laughs> interesting. That's Z Jack Jakey Lee to a T right there. What a brilliant guitar player. Ted Nugent song, Journey to the Center of the something or other. With Phil Lewis from LA Guns. Hey, a, lot this, a lot of these guys just out there doing all kinds of stuff. I think you hear that. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, it's not letting me go there. Ted Nugent and the Amboy Duke song cover. Huh. So this is one of the first records I ever bought. I had no idea he was influenced by him. This just makes sense now. Because Ted was one of my favorite guitar players growing up. I mean, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, I know it's it's probably hard to hear it when I play. But Ted Nugent, Akira Takasaki, and George Lynch and Ace Frilly. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. A little bit, of, a little bit of Jimmy Page in there too. Oh, you, yeah, well, it's got to be that. The vocals go. It almost makes it sound like it's like a Scooby Doo song. Well, it was from like 1968. Uh, I had the original cassette from Polydor Records. Because if it said Ted Nugent, I bought it when I was a kid. But I can almost see like Scooby Doo and like the, oh, totally, the and three the, robotic stooges right. like running back and forth. <laughs> This was a big hit for them, believe it or not, at that time. This is a very uh, um, respectful cover. 
Yeah, it, it, it sounds very 60s esque. I mean, I'll play you the original. Very good. Very 60s. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. All right, you cue that up. I'll do it. So I'm going to play, I'm going to play the Ted Nugent version when Jim gets back in a second. Nobody cares about this except me, so that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, the original version is pretty cool too. Yeah, man. We're gonna contrast it in a second here. But J Jim's walking the dog. And they're walking a parapet, Pete. I will say that. So this part here specifically, Ted Nugent uses a semi-hollow guitar, which is a violin bodied guitar, which the feedback is very harmonic. And that's one of the things that set Ted aside from the other guys because he's using um, a feedback based guitar uh, on tunes like this. So, so let's contrast that to the Ted Nugent version. And we'll, I may skip around because we've already listened to the song once, but here's the, the Amboy Dukes. It's got a little more swing. It's definitely more fluid, a little more upbeat. Mm -hmm. Ted was like 17 when they did this. I was going to say, yeah. He already had a voice on guitar, though. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there was only so much you could do. It hasn't, it hasn't progressed a whole lot. Let's get to the solo. That's just weird, though. Very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, uh, I I find that uh, fascinating. Uh, nobody else does. But oh. I I do. Hey, I got got a George Lynch cover tune here. If you want to hear it, which one? I mean, Vince Neil and Bokers.
fucking YouTube. This... This is a, an epic tune. Great White oh, Buffalo? Boy. What's that? What is that? It's Great White Buffalo? Yeah. The album is named Tooth, Bang, and Claw. Yeah, I think he's got something going on there. I seen him do this when he opened up for Kiss during the Crazy Nights tour. I was there. It was freaking awesome. It was a great night. Relax. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> that means it was a great night. <laughs> I went to in the eighties. I went to about eighty concerts. The, the, that guy I, I brought to the old school show, um, not the last time at Screwball's time before that. I know who you're talking about. He he's he went to everything, every freaking concert made. Like whatever came around, he went. He was there. Yeah, yeah. I hated him for it because I couldn't afford to do it. I I worked side jobs. Who is your daddy? <sighs> I did too, but that was to make money for other things. I didn't have other things. I stole alcohol from my parents and got free boot cut pot from my friends. Yeah. I was, I was, um, the only one I was glad I missed was Triumph. Oh, Why were you glad you missed that? Yeah, Be seriously. Because the guys who went, one of the guys, they went, it was a couple of my friends and they took this uh, girl they knew and the, you know, they all had a crush on her, but the one guy really had a crush on her. So in order to impress her, he drank a bottle of Jack Daniels. Well, that wasn't impressing her. Well, <laughs> yeah, it gets worse. So he wound up just, just as the concert, so just Triumph came on stage. He got violently ill, so they all had to take him down to the bathroom <sighs> at, the, at the Spectrum. You know how lovely those were. So he took him, they took him down there, and he got, like, exorcist sick all over the oh. chick. Oh, Jesus. So, so, so you're just glad you missed it because of circumstances, not I'm because of the band. They missed the entire concert. Uh -uh. They had to take him out of there, and they didn't get to see them play. So had I paid for the tickets, gone down, and wasted I told him, I was like, I would, have, I would have went over to the chick. I would have borrowed some lipstick. I would have drawn a target on his ass, and I would have left him there with his pants down around his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's... You know, I guess it happened. You remember which one that was? Was that the one with Ingve opened up for him? I don't remember. I don't remember at all. I can't even remember what freaking year it was. I know I was a teenager, or so you tell me. There's a lot of actions that take place that you'll never see. It was like a ton of shit that those guys went to, and and it was funny. Like you know, it seemed like all my friends were going to all these concerts, and I went to like so very few. I went to the right ones. I went to Journey, the big '83 jam. That was cool. Um, that was the first one, but then, uh, you know, I mean, I remember the Scorpions down at the Spectrum. That was, yes, that was brain changing. It was like so loud. Yes, you know, your ears ring after a concert. Yeah. Mine ring all the time now. But back then, like, I would go to bed, wake up, they were not ringing anymore. The Scorpions, they rang for days. Mine never stopped now. Oh, yes. Mine was like that when I'd seen Accept at the Trocadero because I was standing right in front of the freaking amplifier. Dude, I was right there next to you because I was standing in front of Wolf Hoffman. I was literally standing in front of his fucking monitor. <laughs> what the fuck did I do wrong? No, blew your drums out. That's what you did. I thought I, thought I went deaf. I thought that was the, last, the first concert I went to. I'm like, I finally did it. I finally did it. Like 2010. Amazing. Damn. You didn't know I'm gonna say that, did you? God, I think the last concert I went to was uh, in three. Jeez. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm real scared. You piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Sure. This is the band Jim Hates. Huh. Yeah. 
I play this a lot when we're doing sound checks for the band. No, I love these guys. I really do. I I hated the fact that they went until I heard the story, and I was like, I'm glad I didn't go. So I'd have been. I mean, can you imagine if you had tickets to see these guys I, play? Well, I would. I would have been like. I I'd have been fucking furious. I gotta go. Yeah, I'd have killed them. <laughs> I'd have. Le- I'd have left them there to be just Dude, violated. At there's the- there's a certain line, yeah. and I'm like, uh, yeah, Dad. Listen, I'm a yeah. Could you uh, come and pick me up later? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. a, I had a Doof has drank too much. He's trying to pre- impress some pussy. Yeah. Pick me up later. I'm going to see my band. Thanks, Pop. I'd have, I'd have drawn a bullseye on his ass, pulled his pants down, left him sitting there on the toilet with his ass up in the air like Mork, and I would have fucked the chick. So because I never got to see this band. Yeah. I never the the one thing I can remember about this is uh, Rick Emmett came out and he had a guitar shaped like the Budweiser logo. Uh, that's hard. And and it had lights on it that was blinking all over it, because I think Bud supported Bud's uh, sponsored the concert that that time. Well, of course, I think they opened up for him. It was wild. Ying Yang. It was a uh, Ingve's uh, trilogy tour and oh, Triumphs. Great album. Triumphs. Uh, I saw Ingve somewhere around there. I'm pissed because I didn't see him open up for ACDC. But I called him when he opened up for Triumph. It was uh, something to say. I believe it, yeah. Douche, douche, douche. Oh, my God, you're great. Douche, oh, my God, you're great. (laughs) Douche, oh, my God, you're great. That was my impression of him. (laughs) Honestly. So let's find some Ingo Live. How come you don't have any guitars with two necks? Um, I'm not that good. That's one thing I got to say. I, I thought was really wild about George Lynch when we saw him in M3. Mm-hmm. And he had the one in the cradle and he had the one on his back. And he played them both. Well, if we did acoustic shit, you know, and, you know, then maybe. But here's here's typical Ingve uh, in about 1986. So let's just give this a, a, a I'll say a gander, but we're, we're listening. Oh, it's got a warning. Playing that on his guitar. Which was the theme track to uh, the haunted house in that's in Atlantic City. Brigantine Castle. Yeah. Oh God! There, there's a tune on the Steeler album he did with Ron Keel. Uh, it's called "Hot on Your Heels." The beginning of it's a blistering solo, and it just kicks ass right into the song. Very Mark Burkert esque. Well, that's what everybody did then. Yeah. So, so you see that pose he just did. Mm-hmm. So, so last night Nance and I watched The Black Widow, and her sister's in it, and she's like, "Why do you always land? Why do you always do that pose?" <laughs> oh my God, I lost it. <laughs> then she did it, and she's like, ah, "No." We were talking about that movie today at dinner. We were like, that was a good movie. I was actually worried about seeing it because everybody said it was such a shitty movie, but it I enjoyed it. It was great out. It I liked was a great it. movie. I, th- yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Somebody asked me if I saw the last one, but um, whatever, the Ten Rings Your thing. But uh, it's only in theaters. I don't go to theaters anymore. I'm going, uh, I wanted to see uh, Bond. Oh, the last Bond, apparently? Yeah. 
last bond with him, my boy. This was a record I used to listen to driving from college to my college job, uh, second half of college. Um, well, no, I guess it wasn't. It was. It was. I was at Bucks County Community College driving to uh, Montgomeryville for my job as a whatever I did in the appliance store. <laughs> I gotta start those tours now. I mean, this was new stuff when I was doing that drive. It's good stuff. This is good stuff, man. I remember one time um, I was working at TV Guide, and we're a bunch of us were going to lunch together, and the car was full of people. And this uh, this chick was sitting next to me, and she's like, "Yeah, I remember like when I was a kid, like, my <laughs> God, I'd be like driving around the car and like listening to like what is it, like Quiet Riot, and I just like flick the cassette." Right in. And heavy and metal health started playing. <laughs> I mean, they used to say King Bay is God. Yeah. I know her. Hmm. That's kind of funny. Well, oh, look at that. I'm impressed. Right now? That? Right now? Yeah. Huh. Beautiful. Amazing vocalist. Huh. Should probably figure out what's going on right now. Probably, yeah. And look what we have here. Dios mio. I gotta pay attention. I gotta concentrate. Because Ingvay's playing. Yeah, sorry. I was getting distracted like an asshole. <sighs> and that's just brilliant. But he knows it. Sometimes you just do. So I'll contrast that to a, a guy who has similar qualities, um, but but thought he was just as good and expected the same respect. Okay. Okay. So, let's see if it doesn't do it with it. No, no, no. We got it. There we go. Great guitar player though, but not Ingve. This is Vinny Vincent. Time for motherfuckers to pay the ferryman. This is the, basically a lot of the guys that are backing up Vince Neal now. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I believe it. And Slaughter. That's that's Danish drum right there. The most narcissistic guitar player that probably has ever lived. <laughs> and if you don't know what a narcissist is after the last five years of our society. True. Well, then you're part of the problem. <laughs> they don't just stare into the water anymore. <laughs> wait, wait, wait to hear the solo. So we'll just, let's just get to the meat. We'll, we'll do the chorus, and then I'll get to right to the right. meat and potatoes of it. And I met this guy. He was... He seemed nice. Yeah. Well... Brototons. He only came to prominence when he played with Kiss, rather, right? He wasn't that- big before that. He wasn't big before Kiss. He wasn't unknown, wasn't he, or something? Bar playing for Happy Days. The show? Yes. He was the, the house guitar player. Yeah, that's terrifying. So I was telling you a story earlier about my friend Pat Schumacher, who I hung yeah. out with the other night. His guitar player from Sick Vicky is basically the guitar player for ESPN. Oh, God. Yeah. So let's 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 see what... what and, and I'm not taking away from him, because Vinny is a... 
prolific, was a prolific guitar player. Beautiful guitar player. Um, but he expected the same response to his playing that 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 uh, Ingvi Malmsteen got. And this is let's let's here we go. You ready? Let's be honest. That's a lot more than Gene and Paul were going to let him do it in Kiss. That was never yeah. going to happen in Kiss. That's impressive. I mean, let, whatever you think of the guy, whatever he did, that is a fucking impressive guitar solo. It it may not be melodically perfect, but execution wise, yeah, still, it's it. That's fucking brilliant. I mean, wow, what the fuck? This is this is before. You know, all the digital bullshit. That guy played that fucking thing. He played that solo that you're hearing there. So um, I'm not going to take that away. But in life, apparently the biggest douche that ever walked the earth. Really? Yeah. Like You can see it. There so were... there's a slaughter song that they talk about him that way. I'm uh, trying really hard to think of a good yo mama line right now. I'm working on it. I gotta find the song. It's um. It's yeah, I read on the internet that chicks dig guys who play the guitar. Yeah, it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna find it, but there's a song by Slaughter where they talk about him and mm -hmm. how how much of a jerk he was. Yeah, you get cocky. What are you gonna do? <sighs> Damn. They don't actually mention his name in the song, do they? They don't have to. It's it's <laughs> it's 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 right there. I'm gonna see if I can find it while you guys uh chat amongst yourselves. So yeah. You know who else is I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy blew me away because he has a guitar that spins and it's a four neck guitar. You're talking about uh the dude from Nitro. Yeah, it's Michelangelo Badio. Got too many names. Another guy who's a, a great guitar player, but strange fella. We got dead air. If you guys, oh, don't sorry, talk. I'm just gonna play I've this. Seen... Do you know the song? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Alice Bowie. Dallas Bowie, that's right. There's no words, it's just the instrumental. I'll be right back. Yep. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to kill that because that's not even like technically a real band. But uh, What do you mean not technically a real band? Do they have another song? Somewhere, I'm sure they do. No, that's the only one. Nah. That's the only one I know of. I'm sure they got something somewhere. So, Doc, people up your way uh, getting ready for Halloween? Yeah, not really. Really? Halloween around here is like thing. Cinco de Mayo. Oh, fuck that. Jesus Christ. I, uh, I actually had someone go by my house um, Sunday while we we're setting stuff up. And he just kind of looked over and went like, all this for one day? <laughs> and I was like, first of all, it's not one day. It's, just, it's all month. This lasts a month. It's fun. This is why we set it up early and why we set it up constantly because it's fun for us. And then I was like, and what do you do for Christmas? Christ almighty, that's one day, right? 
Oh, no, no. That's two months. Don't you know that? Two months. It's more than that if you don't take the, your the shit down. The jack-o'-lanterns come down. down. The Christmas tree goes up. Fucking people. I tell you. I swear to God. Oh, I got it. I got the song. Yeah? Yep. Right. I had to sing it. Uh, you had to go in the bathroom and sing it? Sing it by myself. Gotcha. <laughs> I've, I've used this a couple times on uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook bring up people that are doing bad things. Sushi, dickhead so things. Listen to the lyrics of this song. It and it, it's it's uh, it's pretty interesting um, how that all works out. That's not the song. No, I'm just the intro. You ready? You guys check no. Oh fuck uh, you! Ah, you fucking douchebag! What is that? You ready? Yeah. Guitar player on this song unfortunately passed away on the highway between LA and Vegas. Oh, in Baker. From, he's from Springfield, Pennsylvania. I sat next to his parents when Slaughter opened for Kiss. Weird story. It really, really does. And you know who I mean. You're listening. I know you do. about their, their life on the road with Vinnie Vincent. Who's mm-hmm. stunning looking these days, by the way? Very nice looking old lady. What do you want? Listen to this part. Listen very carefully. I think I know I, that I just guy. want to point out one thing. If that sounds familiar to you from the Animaniacs, that's because the singer in Slaughter was the main character in the fucking Animaniacs. Who? I don't know who he was, but he was the main character. Yakko? I will I will put it on for you. Okay. This is bullshit. No, it's not. Candy ass clown! That's it! That's all you got for me up here, you candy-ass clown! Come on, bitch! You're brutal. You suck. Who was he? Eh, fuck those guys. Oh, this is tough. He was the voice of Queen Mum. Oh, okay. 
He did a bunch of voices, though. He wasn't one of the major ones. He said they said he was one of the major actors in that. I don't know. Let's see. I'm looking up his bio now. I'll look him up on Wikipedia because they know fucking everything. He worked with Lauren Hill. What? The? What? Wait, what? The? Wait, what? <sighs> God damn it. Um. Spelled film filmography wrong. Here we go. Only made the X. Easy now. Yeah, got a leak. What's, what's that guy's uh, name? He was the pie Mark. joker in Batman Beyond. He was mother and freakazoid? What? Mo he was yeah, okay. He was the Queen Mom in Animaniacs. That's it. Okay. I thought I had it wrong. Sorry. But still, that's pretty cool. I gotta know who the hell he was in Freakazoid though. Mother? I mean, you can hear he's got cartoon quality. Yeah. I just wonder who the girl is in the cover of the album. Well, we all do. Mm. Well, Frank Welker was involved, but he's God, so. My ex wife used to wear bathing suits that looked like that. A lot of, yes, everyone did. What were they did. called? What were they? The, the bathing suits? Just one piece of bathing suit. I don't know. Um, it was a brand of bathing suit. She just get the catalogs. Uh, Bido? No. Mm. Something that sounds wet. And she, she had the body for that. Mm. Man. Just saying. Mm -hmm. If you're listening, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my ex girlfriend wearing that one time at the pool, and then she jumped off the pool and landed on top of my head. Got mad at me. The stories you tell are just wacky. Awesome. Just awesome. The hell is that? None of your business. God damn it. Don't do that again. So we got seven minutes. What do you want to do? Well, she's not here, so I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Naked chicks. Ah. Booty. <laughs> the blizzard brings the proof. A busload of tourists on a road that truly never told about. He made the most grotesque videos. He was a brilliant, man. He had, he had, he had his own noir. The unexpected. They thought they were headed to Are you flirting with me? Not quite. These visitors are trying to go home again. But OMG! Is another dimension entirely. One of wonder and imagination. Ah, shit! Fasten your seatbelts. Doesn't make any sense. Signpost up ahead. As they take a turn into the sunlight zone. We just had this weirdest dream where the. <laughs> Watch the tram car, please. Mm. You, should have, you should have totally redone that whole thing. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, it ain't working. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. guys see a cute girl walk oh, by here? Seems like I'm she sorry. might be into a dude who's said. horribly disfigured. So yeah, Rosenberg. <laughs> hey, babe. Yes. All right, I got it. Now what? Whatever. It's great, man. It's yeah. brilliant. It is brilliant. So well done. Yes. I just remember reading something once. Somebody asked him how many chicks he had at once. He said the best he ever did was five. Oh, God. And I was, like, forever trying to do the geometry there. Probably best left alone. Well, there's one behind you. Four lined up in front. In, out, in, out, in, out. Go to the next one. In, out. 
You just go down the line and come back. Oh, wait a minute. What? The one behind you is rubbing you. I, I understand how all this works. If one's rubbing, I can figure out what the other four are doing. Okay, they're, that makes they're sense. They're bent over. No, 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 no. I got it. I'm Sorry. not telling you now. I know that's gross, but who cares? That's how it works for me. I was there. Oh, sexy girlfriend. Oh, that was like creepy. Tronic-y. Come lick my balls. And, th- and then he went from that to... Oh, I love that song. I already played it. Oh, baby, you're the only one. David Lee Roth. Steve uh-huh. Vai, Billy Sheehan. Are you trying to say underwear? Well, let me roll up onto the sidewalk and take a look. Yes. Whoa! This is what I think it is. Talking about a Yankee Rose. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> to go. Remember Dave TV? Yes. <laughs> Minute and a half. That's fucked up. <laughs> I used to drive around in my 1979 powder blue Mercury Cougar XR7 listening to this tune. What? Jim said we're about we're 50 seconds 50 away. Seconds out. So uh, it's been fun. What's going on this weekend, real quick? Well, we've got old school at the Whitpain Tavern in uh, wherever the hell that Whit is, Whitpain, Teller, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then old school at uh, the Pagoda Motorcycle Club in Pagoda, Pennsylvania. Redding. Redding. Yeah, Redding. 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 And then. Uh, Jim Baxter said Vi's a sort of okay player. Oh, my. What the? Oh, man. What the? What the? Um, we'll and, take that uh, up next week. And uh, and then the following week, I am with Instinct at Screwballs with Ashes to Omens. Yeah. And then Old School. I said Instinct, right? And then, and then did. Old School on the Friday, the 30, 29th at uh, Nick's Roast Beef in Northeast Philly. Best concert I ever saw Jim Baxa was David Lee Roth with Steve Vai and Billy Sheehan. No holds barred. Best fucking musicianship concert I ever saw in my life, honestly. After that was yes, and I'll go down the list next week. All right. We're going to back away. Doc, thank you uh, for everything as usual. All righty. And uh, we'll be back next. No. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, it's Halloween. Uh, the Halloween show will be next week.
So I think it's Halloweeny shit. And then after that, I'm I'm uh, I'm out of here. Yeah, and we have to, uh, we'll deal with that later. But uh, he's out of here. Think about what you think about what you want to wear. And, I'm uh, gonna wear nothing. Well, if you want to go as Lady Godiva, that's all up to you. I'll and, be in the. Uh, oh, I, I forgot the thing. Yeah. But uh, all right, we'll do the Halloween show next week, and we'll see you then. Take care. Night. Peace. Later. See ya.